What's up everybody? So the Elden Ring DLC trailer just dropped and honestly, I don't think you're ready. I'm not talking physically ready as in having a character at the appropriate level, but I'm talking about not being ready for the greatness that this DLC is about to deliver. I think that Shadow of the Earth Tree is about to completely change the meaning of a DLC or an expansion and take this to a whole new level. And there are several reasons why. Let's start with the first one, quality and quantity. It has been revealed through the interviews done with Miyazaki that the Shadowlands are a little bit larger than Limgrave. Now, the thing with Miyazaki is that he has one philosophy when it comes to interviews and divulging information on games. It is under promise and over deliver. I'm not sure if you guys remember, but two years ago, Miyazaki said that it would take 20 hours to complete Elden Ring. And we know very well that this is a gross underestimation that is done on purpose because your average player will spend anywhere between 50 to 80 hours, possibly even 100 on their first playthrough as they're getting their bearings and learning the boss's moves and so on, depending on your skill level, obviously. So they always like to underpromise and overdeliver. Another indication that Miyazaki is back to his old tricks is the price. Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree is going for 40 bucks, which is two thirds of the price of the full game. Now, obviously we're not expecting to have two thirds of the size of the game, but I think it's safe to assume that it'll be closer to half than just Limgrave. Now let's talk about the quality of the DLC. We've only seen so little, and this is only the first trailer, but already we can see that this is expanding upon what Elden Ring did so fantastically. When it comes to the enemy types, the boss types, it is incredible. And the same way how they featured Melania as the main character for the collection edition, Mesmer the Impaler is taking her place and he seems to be on the same level of intensity and difficulty. Miyazaki elaborated during an interview. He said, yeah, you might remember her. They're not crucial to the completion of the DLC, but they are an optional extra to help challenge for those who are so inclined. That said, there may not be another boss on the exact same level as Melania, but we feel like this is somewhere that we've paid close attention to, this level of challenge and offering that same level of freedom, and we hope that players are able to blossom in the land of shadow in the same way that they were in the lands between. Actually, I want to redress that. It's not the fact that it's only a lesser level to Melania, but we have prepared bosses on that with a similar mindset within the DLC area ones that will challenge the player and hopefully be as memorable as Melania was. Once again, this is the Japanese culture of being very humble, under promising and over delivering because look back at all of From Software's DLC, the old hunters, the ring city, the best bosses and the hardest bosses are always in the DLC. And I highly doubt that's going to change with Elden Ring's DLC. Now, another factor that will make this DLC much better than anything we've seen in the industry is how they are going to evolve the gameplay. There are new weapons, there are new weapon arts, but they are not just simply another katana. There are different classes of weapons that will completely revamp PvP as well as give PvE players a whole new way to play. These weapons just look like regular throwing knives, but it's actually a whole new weapon class that changes your regular R1 attacks into long range attack. This new weapon art has you slide from side to side to attack your foes, giving you some extra mobility. And most importantly, this new class of weapons turns you into a Kung Fu master. Now that's the weapon type that interests me the most because I really like the Senpu Shinobi arts from Sekiro and I really wanted to see them back in action. And that's exactly what we have in front of us. To be able to do Kung Fu in Elden Ring is going to completely change the game, especially when it comes to PvP. 
A big complaint that gamers have with DLC from standard developers and publishers is that it's always more of the same. And that couldn't be more true in the example of Wolong. I liked the base game, I thought it was fine, but when I played the DLC, I just didn't feel any difference. It was just new levels that looked bland and uninteresting, and I had the feeling of been there, done that. And that's exactly the opposite of what we're going to be getting here with Elden Ring. And it's been like that for every single DLC that From Software pushed out. The environments are so incredibly different. The Ring City, Ariandel, it brings such a different vibe that it is distinguishable from the base game. And it seems that the team at From Software is going to crank that up even more because Miyazaki said that the field and dungeon areas are more seamlessly interconnected. We've seen haunted grasslands, fiery caverns, and mystical runes in the trailer. But in regards to the noticeable divide between open fields and secluded dungeons areas in the base game, Miyazaki says that in the DLC, we wanted to go more in-depth and bring a denser and richer level design, which bring these types of layouts together more seamlessly. There of course will be large open areas, there of course will be legacy dungeons, but we've also experimented with something a little bit more in between these as well to bring a more diverse gameplay experience. And what I think he means by that is that they are going back to their roots. The Dark Souls 1 interconnectivity was one of the biggest selling point of the game. And there were some people that had some valid criticism with Elden Ring that everything was too disjointed. Although you could easily counter that the legacy dungeons are standard from software design. But it's interesting to know that now there's going to be a balance between interconnectivity and open world. Now, another reason why I believe that this DLC is going to push the boundaries of what a good DLC is, is the location to access it. Before, we have theorized on the channel that it could be either the Church of St. Trina or Michaela's Cocoon. There is also a very suspicious door in the Halig Tree but it turns out that it is Michaela's cocoon. It has been confirmed officially by Miyazaki himself. Now this brings in challenges and rewards for the player. So for the casual gamer, they will have to really push themselves to even access the DLC. And I think it might frustrate some people. We might see some negative reviews because the people will have paid 40 bucks and they can't even access the DLC that they paid for. But for those who are more determined, that are possibly new from software fans, but that have the right mentality, they are going to push themselves to get to Moog, to beat Moog, just so they can access the glorious DLC. It's going to further reinforce the From Software mentality of overcoming challenges, that you really want to see what's behind the door and that even the new players will have to use whatever tool is at their disposal, whether it's using summons or getting the help of a friend, but they will be on the same level as everybody else, and they will feel a sense of accomplishment even just by entering the DLC itself. So I think it was a very interesting choice, a little bit risky to put the entry at Moog's Cocoon, but I definitely think it will pay off in the long run to just solidify this as a premium experience for the endgame content. The release date is also worth talking about because they chose June 21st. Now, I wasn't that surprised because I put a community post yesterday. There was a leaker that said that would be the date and he's usually reliable. So that wasn't a surprise for me. But June 21st is interesting because it's exactly four months from now, which is giving From Software and Bandai Namco a lot of time to market the game. They did say that this was only the first trailer, and I'm assuming we are going to see a huge marketing campaign for this game. I mean, this is already blowing up. It literally shattered the internet. Just nine hours ago, the trailer dropped, and it's already at 5.4 million views on YouTube. 
and that's not even counting the other outlets like IGN that also posted the trailers themselves. So in the base game we know that the Elden Ring was shattered but in the DLC it's your expectations that will be shattered. They will be completely blown away. I think that Miyazaki is being his usual self and severely under promising and over delivering with this one. Now there's so much more to talk about but we'll keep that for another video. If you enjoyed the video and you want to stay up to date with everything Elden Ring, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next one.